Welcome traders. Uh, we're going to get going here in just the next 30 seconds, just uh, waiting for that two o'clock UK time to get started. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you could type a Y in the chat box, that would be really useful. Thanks, Leroy. Okay, that's 2 p.m. UK time, and we are going to get going here. Um, before I get started, just a quick piece of housekeeping. If you have any questions with respect to any of the charts that I cover today, um, if you can make a note of those, and then at the end of the presentation, I'll, uh, I'll open up a brief period of uh, Q&A, and so if you've got any questions, or there's a chart you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover, in my deck, then uh, you can uh, you can request me to give a view. Then, so let's get going. Before we start, obviously, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly for today's discussion, um, is the uh, views expressed by me are solely uh, representative of my opinions. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So for those of you who are here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. Uh, my name is Patrick Manley. After I graduated from King's College London, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally at times overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some Capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 or more appropriately day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six figure financial hit. To say this was a gut wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months, two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal orientated individual who was focused purely on financial gains to becoming process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is really on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering again annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I have mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in uh, other market orientated projects. I'm a resident market expert, uh, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill, providing an in-depth daily outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setups for three to five markets, 
I also run Tick Mills Rapidly uh, Expanding E-mini Strategy Group, where I provide a specific daily trade plan with intraday trade updates. Since its inception, it's delivered over 1,200 points of upside. So that gives you a flavor of, uh, of where I'm coming from. A couple of links I want to share with you. One is, uh, this is the Tick Mill uh, Trade Ideas section on uh, TradingView. For those who want to follow along with uh, trades that I'm tracking or setups, posting, uh, posting those there. And the other link is to the Tickmill uh, Futures Group. You can uh, request access by using this link and access my uh, daily trade plan for the E-mini S&P. And uh, you get intraday updates and uh, trade alerts there. Also access to institutional research um, alongside those, uh, those trade updates and the, and the daily trade plan, which is posted as a video here. You can see an example of it. Um, before the uh, the US Open each day, uh, so I strongly suggest you uh, you take the chance to join that group. Uh, 165 of us in there now, and uh, and you can uh, you can join in and uh, and follow along with my trades. So that brings us to the charts. Let's start with the dailies. Let's look through some of these <coughs> major markets. Right, some pretty interesting. Um, in uh, sorry, Chris, uh, can I use MT4 to view your screen? Uh, not sure exactly what you mean there. Um, the, the, the charts I use are through TradingView. You, there is a link in the, uh, in the E-mini strategy group here. This link, uh, when you click on this, you get you access my screen as it's set up and uh, the, the support and resistance levels that I identify and all, all the trades, et cetera. So uh, by clicking on that, you basically get access to, um, to this screen here, which is my, uh, my daily setup charts. I hope, that's, uh, hope that helps. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get back to the, uh, the charts here. So starting with the S&P 500, like I say, that's some pretty, interesting inflection points. Currently what we're looking at for the S&P is um, the ideal corrective scenario is that we trade down into this 4240, or these prior st structure highs, structure low there. So what we'd be looking for is a move down into that area and that will be the level at which we'd be looking then to, uh, to set long positions. Um, what would be a, a heads up as to the, uh, the potential that the correction is actually actually completed here at 4276 will be if we take out this uh, current swing structure here. So we have an equality objective versus yesterday's low. And, uh, and we can see this three way corrective move play like this back into that, uh, that prior X wave high and then get this move down into our 4240. And then we can start to think about the, this being the fourth wave low and an extension then higher for the fifth wave into the back end of the year. Um, the clue really as to whether or not the correction we complete is firstly taking out this trend line resistance on a closing basis, but then closing above 4486. If we get that close, then we can pretty much determine from a probabilistic perspective that correction is complete and we're going to be moving meaningfully higher into the uh, into the back end of the year. First things first is going to be how we trade at this trend line resistance today. 44.21, we need to see a close through there. That will be the first checkbox, really, that we uh, that we have a potential low in place. But like I say, as long as we hold 44.86, then we're looking at this 42, uh, 42.40 test. And then we can see if we, uh, we're going to move meaningfully higher from there. NASDAQ, NASDAQ a little bit different because we've actually completed the equality objective. So we have our A, B, C low here. And now, so the NASDAQ has a similar setup to the, uh, the S&P. Obviously, what we're looking at is will we get through the equality objective? 15,206 it comes in at. So the NASDAQ gets up here. And we fail, uh, this would coincide obviously with the S&P holding its trend line. Then we look for a return back into the ascending trend line support before again then looking to base 
and make them move higher into the back end of the year. DAX, <coughs> again, the DAX came just shy of its equality objective at uh, 14,755. So key for the DAX now is gonna be how we trade at this trend line, because if we hold the trend line um, and we get a meaningful rejection there, then there is still the potential for the DAX to get down into the support zone here um, before then extending to the upside uh, for this run higher into the uh, ascending trendline resistance, which we're coming in around 17,300 at the moment. So again, watch how this, watch how price responds at these trend lines. If we hold or we get closes through, that's going to be our first signal that maybe we have a meaningful low in place and, uh, and we are heading higher. So then obviously that feeds into um, the dollar view. Dollar has been trading uh, pretty consistently within this ascending pitchfork. Um, we traded into the top side yesterday. We've seen some selling come through. We've taken out an internal trend line, but this is the key support zone now that we're currently sitting at here. So if we hold the uh, 93, uh, 9360 area, and we're seeing a bit of profit taking at the moment, then what we're ultimately looking for will be another leg to the upside to test this 9502 as the next uh, area of interest. Coming in a little, just above 95 actually would be the area I'll be watching. And then from there, we can see a, another pullback um, as we head into the potential Fed taper into the back end of this year. So what we'll be looking at then will be uh, the potential for a a three wave into uh, test the ascending trend line support before then getting the final extension up into what should give us the 50% retracement of the, uh, of the entire decline here. Let's just draw that in for you. So you can see we've got the, uh, this is strange, one second guys, move that. So yeah, we've got the 50% retracement and the 161 extension of this swing structure here coming in at the 96, uh, 96.30 area. So we'd be looking for a move into there. And then that uh, should act as a, a more meaningful um, upside objective. And then at a minimum, we'd anticipate a pullback equal to this leg here. Uh, so we'd be thinking about something like this, uh, the dollar would be the uh, the play from here. Now, what's gonna be the heads up with the dollar to suggest that this, uh, this thesis isn't gonna play out? Well, really at this stage, we'd have to lose this trend line support. So um, we'd be thinking about something like uh, a close through 92.90 to suggest the upside is over for the dollar and we're gonna head back down into the lows and meaningfully lower. So whilst we hold, certainly at this point, this, uh, this support zone at the 93.60, sets up a run for 95, but if we fail here, then we're looking down into trend line support of the 92.90 and a failure there would suggest it's lights out for the dollar for now. And we're, uh, we're heading back down and resuming the downtrend uh, in the dollar index. But holding the supports will be key and another extension higher will, uh, will inject some more energy to the upside in terms of, uh, in terms of the DXY. Gold. <coughs> So gold is, uh, has broken out now of its trend line resistance and we're getting the anticipated extension to the upside. So pullbacks uh, to be expected, but whilst we hold now this uh, the 77.70 area as support, we look for a test ultimately now of that 1850, 1835 descending trend line resistance. Now if sellers step back in there, we do still have that downside target of 15.20. And that's versus this much bigger swing structure here. So that's what we're looking at in terms of gold. But again, if we get a close through that descending trend line, that's going to uh, add further weight to the dollar. And, um, and then we can start to think about testing the 1917 level again as, uh, as range resistance. So some pivotal areas of interest for, uh, for gold here as, uh, as price develops. Silver, silver trying to break out of its descending trend line resistance and put in a base here. So watching silver now to see if we can, uh, if we can get through 
trend line uh, resistance, and then we'd look for a test up into its ascending, uh, descending trend line resistance up at 26.70, and that will kind of coincide with the dollar testing 18.50 to the upside. And then again, we'll see if sellers are going to step back in and take this down again into into the support zone. Crude obviously been on a tear, has traded up into um, the resistance zone that we're tracking the 81. 15 um, and we are seeing a bit of uh, a bit of profit taking potentially here but really now the story for crude is any pullbacks into this trend line support currently coming in just below the 70 dollar barrel is uh, is really going to be an opportunity on the long side and um, and certainly then you can think about the major fifth wave objective being uh, towards $96 a barrel in terms of crude there. So pay close attention here. Potential for some profit taking as we hit that uh, that one two seven extension and then any three wave pullbacks into the trend line support with bullish reversal patterns. We want to be uh, looking on the long side, targeting the ascending trend line resistance up towards 96. Bitcoin <coughs> still holding. Um, uh, projected ascending trend line support. So any pullbacks now in Bitcoin back into, uh, really we can start to think about these prior highs here now, uh, pullbacks into the 5250 level um, should, should find support there. And then we're looking for an extension up into the, the 75,000 uh, upside objective for, uh, for Bitcoin. So uh, watch any pullbacks into this prior high here at the 5260. Uh, 52,600 level uh, bullish reversal patterns are an opportunity then to get in on the long side. Certainly looking for a retest of the prior cycle highs, 65,000, and then onto that longer term objective of 75,000. Dollar yen, <clears throat> obviously supported by the uh, the yield story in the US. So pullbacks now into these prior highs here, uh, 112.30. I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to set long positions. And ultimately then we look for a test of the projected ascending trend line resistance that comes in 116.20 now. Uh, let's just see, we also have a, an equality objective developing here. Let's just draw this in here. So this swing to this swing. Yeah, so 115.80 is this big, is this larger ABC equality objective. And then we've got that ascending trend line resistance and that 116.30 also. So this is the target zone now, as long as we hold uh, the 112 area of support, we look for 115, 116 in terms of the dollar yen. Swissy pulling back into uh, to test this support zone. So if the Swissy can, uh, can hold in this area and get some bullish reversal signals here, we actually have a target and a quality objective versus this A, B, low we have a c wave up here upside objective at 9640 obviously it's going to be key there for um, the dollar index to hold its support area and, uh, and the euro's fine resistance we'll take a look at the euro in a minute dollar cad um, extending lower to test now story with the dollar cad here is we could still get this inverse head and shoulder scenario play out uh, we don't want to see a loss of 123.15 on the downside if we do then that opens up a retest of the lows in dollar CAD down to 120. But if we hold here bullish reversal patterns, there's an opportunity for a, at least a three-way corrective move versus this decline. And so when I say that, what I'm talking about as a minimum objective for any correction is going to be the 50% retracement of this current leg. So that would have us um, that would have us somewhere back into uh, 126.13 area would be the initial target for any pullback there. Singapore dollar, looking for, uh, looking for this one to get another test of its ascending trend line support, the pitchfork support here. By the time you're getting, the third test is gonna be key. We really want to see that hold and get a sharp reaction to, uh, sharp reaction and reversal. If we do, then the opportunity is gonna be on the long side to ultimately take out this yearly pivot at 136.80. Uh, but it's going to be key to see how we trade on this trend line test. So that's one that's uh, is certainly on the screens that I'm watching. The euro, I'm running uh, a long position from yesterday, uh, but it's running into a bit of resistance here. So 
if uh, if we get a pullback now in the euro that holds the 115.60 as support, then we have the potential to put in a three wave corrective move. So we measure this leg here from that current low if we hold it. Um, so if we do hold it here, then we get a move up into test resistance uh, 116.70. And then from there, we can see that next extension lower into the target here at 114.30. And obviously that will coincide with the dollar holding its support and, uh, and extending higher. Um, so we'll see how the euro trades here. But I'm long uh, just, be just below yesterday's high. Um, and we'll see now how we, uh, how we fare here with the euro. Still looking ultimately for an, at least a three-wave correction and then new lows on the basis that we don't have any meaningful divergence down here at the moment. Euro Swiss, looking for the Euro Swiss to test into the monthly and weekly range support and projected trend line support coming in 106.30. And from there, we look for bullish reversal patterns and similar story. <coughs> A minimum target for the correction will be the 50% retracement uh, from the low there. So that will take us back uh, up into uh, the one towards 108 in terms of the, uh, the euro swiss there but again we want to see those bullish reversal patterns before engaging on the long side euro sterling got a bit of weakness here now looking for that final move down to test this projected ascending descending trend line support bunch of s3 pivots there uh, looking for 8350s and that could then complete this cycle and then we should look for a, a more meaningful correction in terms of euro sterling. Euro CAD, we are looking now for um, one more extension here to the downside, uh, looking for a test of this pivot low here, the swing low. So 142.60s, if we can get in there, uh, watch the bullish reversal patterns there, and again, we can think about at least a correction back into these price cycle lows at 145.79. Cautious, obviously, because we don't have any momentum divergence down here. So that suggests this will only be a corrective uh, advance and we should see new lows in terms of the Euro CAD. Sterling. Ideally looking for Sterling to get a test of this descending trend line resistance. So 137.96. Now that's going to be a key test because we still have a, a potential C wave objective down here at 133.20 for sterling. Um, could be that we get uh, this type of scenario now. We can back in here, hold, and then get the advance into that descending trend line resistance. That descending trend line resistance is going to be key uh, for a bunch of markets, really, because if we take out this descending trend line resistance on a closing basis, that would suggest then that this is our C wave low, that it's complete, we're not gonna get the equality objective. And again, that will feed into the dollar view because if we get through on a closing basis through 138, then we can think about this correction being complete. And then we can start to look again at challenging those 142.50 highs and extending through those. So we're gonna get some pretty decent trading information out of Sterling in coming sessions. Um, but whilst we hold below this trend line, we still look ultimately for this uh, 133.20 to be checked before we can make that, uh, that next leg to the upside in terms of sterling. <coughs> sterling Aussie, for a nice trend line support coming in here and equality objective at 183.50. And we're paying close attention to how we trade there. That could complete this major correction. And then we can start to think about uh, a move higher again, Sterling Aussie, back up through that 191.50. So keep a close eye on 183.50. It's the ABC equality objective. And we've got this ascending trend line support here coming in. Sterling Yen has broken out now to the upside. Well, we've got to clear now. If we can clear 156 on a closing basis without getting, uh, without setting up a double top here. If we get that closed, then the target for sterling on the weekly chart is actually up to 164, but we're gonna pay close attention to how price trades here because we could have a uh, pretty significant double top scenario. And why do I say that? Well, I say it currently on the basis that we have 
quite a bit of divergence in play here in terms of sterling yen. So this one I'm going to show you in a minute on the four hour chart where there could be an opportunity in uh, later today or tomorrow in terms of sterling yen. Um, we'll take a look at four hour chart in a second on that one. Last few of these dailies, let's check in with the Aussie. So the Aussie has taken out its descending trend line resistance. So that now sets a target for the Aussie at 75.39 uh, as an equality objective versus this swing structure. So we'll be looking at potential pullbacks in the Aussie. The Aussie yen. Actually, we're gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump into the four hour charts and just give you some uh, updates with respect to these, uh, these yen pairs because there are, there are potentially a bunch of opportunities coming here. So let's start with the sterling yen. So you can see we're in this extension into, uh, into the top side of the, uh, of the pitchforks. So what we've got here at the moment, um, if we think about it in terms of wave structure, I'll just draw this in for you so you can see. So we have this one, two, we've got a potential three, four scenario here, and this is the fifth wave. Now, when we think about the fifth wave, <clears throat> more often than not, what we're looking for is an equal, uh, a wave five that's equal to wave one. So if we are going to call this our four low, we can see that that extension will take us into this uh, projected ascending trend line resistance. 156.40 is the area uh, to pay close attention to. And certainly if we have this current momentum divergence still in play, and what that's going to set up is going to be a uh, at least a corrected move equal to this structure here before then taking it higher once more so this is what the play will be is if we can get into that 156.40 and get a bearish rejection so you know an outside reversal or pin bar rejection from that area then the setup is going to be a, an opportunity on the short side uh, Again, we have to have, have that momentum divergence needs to maintain and, be in, and, and keep it in play. Um, then we can get back into this 153.15, these prior highs. And then from there, we can start to think about the next major upside extension for Sterling Yen. And if we hold that area, then certainly we want to be thinking about a move up into um, the 164 handle. So there's a couple of great opportunities here in Sterling Yen. One is going to be playing the corrective short side. And again, you know, looking at two or 300 pip uh, trades here, but the main one that we want to pay attention to is going to be once that correction completes, uh, the opportunity then is going to be to get in on the long side and hold for, uh, hold for a position play really in terms, of, uh, in terms of Sterling Yen. So that's one that I'm tracking closely. CAD Yen is another one, got the same, similar type of setup here. CAD Yen structure is a little bit different. So we're, we're currently not at this resistance. So if we get a bearish rejection here, we've got the momentum divergence, then what we can think about initially with the CAD Yen is a correction equal to this move here. And then we'd have this fifth wave extension. So let's just get the equal leg there. So from current levels, this is what we'd be looking for in terms of the CAD yen. So a move, uh, a correction here, we've got momentum divergence, so we can look at a bearish rejection, uh, looking then for a test of this 90-40 area, before then looking for a fourth wave low to be in play. And then we put a fifth wave upside objective, uh, five equals one, which will put us up into uh, close to 94. So again, the, due, the, the, the better opportunity here is not necessarily, you know, certainly it's, it's a trade to fade this uh, potential third wave high, but it's the fourth wave buying opportunity that is the real, uh, the real play here um, for, uh, for these yen pairs. Let's take a look, uh, Aussie yen. You can see the setup, it's, it's similar. Um, looking at this resistance area here, so we've got, I'll just draw this in quickly. So we can think about this one, two, three, four, and then a five somewhere here. Let's just get a five equals one target. So there we go. So we're looking for the dollar yen in towards that 84.50. And then we should see this corrective move replicated to a degree. This, certainly the scale 
the, not necessarily the time. So, I mean, the correction could be a bit more complex, but in terms of scale, we should be looking at something similar to that. And then what we have then will be the fifth wave play, which is this trade here. So if we can get back down into this uh, 83 area, then we've got a potential fourth wave lower, a higher degree fourth wave low that sets up a run to 85.50. And then from there, we can start to think about a more meaningful correction playing out something similar in scope to this leg here. Let's take a look at one more yen pair. Uh, let's see what Take a look at the Kiwi yen. <coughs> uh, not as quite a clean a chart there. I prefer the Aussie yen at the moment. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. The, the Aussie yen and the CAD yen are, are two that I think have, have really nice clean patterns in play here. Oh, and the Sterling yen. So those are my three, uh, three charts that I'm going to be paying close attention to in the next 24 hours as, uh, as opportunities on both the short and then the long side. So that's, uh, that's a wrap for me. That's what I'm watching, paying close attention to these equity indexes, the FX majors, the dollar index, and these, uh, and these yen crosses. Are there any questions? People, if you don't have a question, an N in the chat box is just as useful. Strongly suggest you take advantage of joining me in the Tickmill uh, E-mini S&P Futures group. Uh, receive my, my daily trade plan. And the intraday trade updates as well uh, are given in that group. Okay, thanks everyone. I uh, hope you found that, uh, that session useful and we will reconvene at the same time next week. Take care.